Hello and welcome to another Mad Pony video. I had a question sent in from a user asking how to create a plugin that would nudge the axis of our view in a certain way. So in this video, we're going to create a plugin, which is this plugin right here. And what it does is if we give it a certain degree amount, we can nudge our view like that or in the Y or in the Z okay and we also have these sliders down here let me just put everything in zero that will allow us to do this okay so rotate like that and like that so I thought it would be a good opportunity to create a video where I show you the whole process of coding a plugin and how to use variables and how to use routines to improve that code. Now for this plugin, we'll, we, we will use transform get and transform set. So if you're not familiar with these two commands, you will be by the end of this video. Now this is going to be a long video because uh, it's the whole coding process, um, at least most of it. So bear with me and I hope you enjoy it and it helps you with your coding. Let's get started. So transform git gets all the x, y, z positions, the x, y, z scale and the x, y, z rotation and places them all in variables that you pass. Transform set will will set a new axis for the view. So what we're going to try to do is create a variable, a list variable that holds the current position using transform get and then we we're going to try to add something to it. You'll see what I mean once I get started. So because I'm going to share this script, I added some links and myself as the author and now the first thing I'm going to need is a list variable. So I'm going to say var def to define a variable, g because it's going to be a global variable, trs a short for transform and I want this list variable to have nine positions and I'm going to start at zero there as the first value. So this is going to be the variable that I'm going to use and now let's get started with the routine. So for now, I'm just going to create a, a routine called set axis, which will be my main routine to go to. And I'll start doing the buttons in the sliders that I'm, that I'm thinking about. Okay, so what I came up with is having three buttons, X, Y, and Z, that will nudge by an amount set by a slider down here. And this slider will is going from one a minus 180 to 180 it will have a resolution of one and it will start at zero so it will start at the center this is the nudge amount slider so i already put a width on the sliders and buttons so the slider width is going to be one which will be the full width of a plugin and the sliders will be divided in 33 sections which means it will fill the three buttons will fill one unit in the um, in the plugin for now this will obviously show in the z script window and each button will call this routine and will pass in a value and this value will be the type so if you say here type so every time i call this routine i'm passing in a value giving identifying which type I'm going to use. So now I'm going to need another variable here in the slider that I'll need to use inside my set axis routine. So I'm going to go, I'm going to define that variable now and I called it nudge amount. So to set that variable, we'll start it at zero to set that variable. I'm going to say var set down here in the slider, nudge amount. And I'm going to use this special command set, I get, I get zero. I get zero is going to get the, 
value set in this slider. Okay, let's load this and see how it's looking right now. And load and reload buttons, these buttons that I have here are exactly these two, as you can see in the script. So I'm just gonna press load and I'm gonna look for that. And this is in Z scripts. Okay, let's load up the script. Okay, we get an error right here. This is because I created the list variable with a comma here. Okay, let's save that. Say okay. Now I just have to press reload. Okay, so this is what we get. We get the X, the Y, the Z, and the energy amount. Oh, well, here we get that slider minus 180 to 180. So the objective is to give it a nudge value and then I press one of these guys and it will nudge the view in the X, Y or Z axis. Okay, so far so good. So the first thing we're going to do is get those values. So transform get will get me the position in this tree and then and then the scale goes into these three and finally the rotation which is what we're after goes in these three values here for our list variable so we got it now we need to change it now we can say we can use the if statement asking what type are we on if it's one we know it's x if it's two it's y and if it's three it's z so let's do that so here we got the type I'm gonna delete this we don't need this anymore we can see it here so if type 1 we are in the x-axis type 2 the y type 3 the z so we know that this is going to be the x this is going to be the y and this is going to be the z so I add a transform set to down here after we do the calculations because we only need to do the calculation to the X right there, which is this guy, and then the Y, and then the Z, and then the calculation is done. We can set it, because these values are going to be changed in here, in these if statements. So I created a little note here using string merge, and I'm merging this with a value of X, and this with a value of y and this with a value of z so that I know what value what values I have one before I press the button and what values will I have after I do my if statement operations on those values so for now we should have something like this let's check it out in ZBrush if I reload this, I press X. Okay. So as you can see, right now X is minus 10 something, Y is minus 49, Z is minus 10. So I click, the operation runs, and then I should have a different number. So I'm just going to change something here in my script, and I'm going to replace these dashes with this so it's easier to see when it's a negative and a positive number now we know that nudge amount which is down here set by the slider can be a negative or a positive number so to keep to have that in into account we need to ask if nudge amount is going to be a positive or a negative number and a way we can do that is by asking if nudge amount is bigger than zero. So if it's bigger than zero, it's a positive number. I can say positive. And if it's smaller than zero, it's a negative. Now we know that this can also be zero, so I might as well say if it's bigger or equal to zero, it's a positive. Now let's try and use var add. So I'm gonna say var add to add to this variable. I'm gonna grab that variable. 
var adds to this variable the nudge amount. And if it's a negative, we're going to try and do a var sub, which will subtract the nudge amount from that value. Now we can start the trial and error process and see if this is working, if it's not, and what problems will arise. So going back to ZBrush, I'll press reload. I'll set my nudge amount to be 15. And let's try and press X. So my X is minus 10. I'm going to add 15 to that, so it should be 5, the result nearly five there and it moved up let's go to a, to snap this to a view here okay and let's bring up my gizmo okay so x is this axis here if i spin on the x it should spin like that so let's press x so it's zero right now, it becomes 15, and there we go. It's 15, it becomes 30, there we go. Okay, let's try Y, which is this direction, I believe, yes. Y, zero, 15, okay, zero, 30. And now let's try Z, so it should spin like that. You can see the Z there. 0, 15. Okay, let's remove that note. I don't think we need it anymore. So let's just pressing control and then control forward slash, save that, back into ZBrush, reload this. Okay, so Let's do 15 again, X. Okay, so we got a problem there. Once it gets to that position, it starts coming back and then goes forward again. All right, let's bring up that note and see what happens there. So I'm gonna uncomment that note, save and reload and do a 15 here. Let's see what's there before. So X is 75 right now. I add 15, it's 90 and it goes to 90, that's fine. If I press X again, it's 89, which is approximately 90. And then it becomes 104 and it comes back. So clearly we need to do something about this value when it's bigger than 90. So I'm going to create an if statement asking if after I add nudge amount, is this number bigger than 90? And before I carry one, I, I want to see what happens if I go in the negative axis. Let's go back into ZBrush and make this minus 15. So it's practically doing the same as var add right there. So I believe I might need to make this an absolute value. And when you use ABS for absolute, if it's a negative value, it becomes a positive. Well, it just removes the minus from the number. Let's see what happens there. Let's reload that and do a minus 15 here. 89, okay, 74, okay, kind of keeps going in the direction that we wanted when we were adding. Okay, let's try to add. And that goes in the other direction. What if I keep going after 90? And then it goes back. So to better understand what's going on, I created a slider that goes from minus 180 to 180 and it's just going to set the X. So we know that the X is 
this here and I'm just setting it to whatever I place in that slider. So I'm getting it and then setting it. So pressing reload, I get this new slider set zero. Okay, let's do 15. Okay, 15 goes there. Let's do 45. 45 goes there. 50, 70, 80, 90, 91 starts coming back. Okay, so what number do we need? So it keeps going in that direction. Let's try minus 90. No, that's not it. Minus 180. Okay, minus 180 gives me that. What's zero? Zero is the same as minus 180. What is 180 then? Upside down. So from 90, if I want to keep going, I can't go to, my, to 91. And minus 90 gives me the opposite. Okay. So what is minus 95? Okay, starts moving in that direction. How about minus 89? Minus 80. Goes back into that direction. Okay, so I'm, I made it so that I can read using this button. So right now, I've set it to 90, and if I press X, I can see that is yeah, it's close to 90. But one thing here I notice is that Y is minus 179. If I just snap this view here, and I press this again, okay. So 90 on the X, but Y became 180. Okay, if I move this down a little bit, what happens there? Y becomes zero, X becomes 81. If I move it a bit past 90 there, I get Y as 180 <clears throat> again. So, okay, here's the answer, I believe. It's in Y. So when Y is zero, a positive X value will move in one direction. And when Y is not zero, is like 180 or minus 180, it seems that it moves in the opposite direction. So knowing this, we can have an if statement asking if y is zero or not. So I came up with this solution for now. I'm asking if y, which is this seven, is not equal to zero. I'm gonna subtract. If it is equal to zero, I'm gonna add. And the result I got is, if I'm, for example, in the front view, and I'm gonna add 15, it goes all the way up to here, and then it gets stuck. If I move it past this point, still gets stuck, still gets stuck. So I know that from here all the way up to here, all is fine. So let's see what value have we got when we get here. Just do that. Reload. 15. So what's the value here? Okay, y is 0, that is 0, x is minus 89. Okay, and it goes back. So what's the value here? 15, 30, okay, okay, okay. Right, we get to 180, and then when we get to 180, so that is not zero anymore and then we start subtracting okay it's not zero not zero subtracting subtracting okay now we got negative numbers there let's look at that subtracting minus 60 Minus 75. Okay, now we're asking for minus 89 and y is 0. So we know that y is 0, so we're gonna fall around here. y is 0, and we know that x is minus 90, or less than minus. So after a few tests, I found, I believe I found the right question to ask, and I'm asking when it falls into here, if 
the x is less than minus 90 just say hello and that's in what happens is this so if I'm here and I start adding 15 degrees once I get here it says hello hello here is where you have your problem okay so we know that subtracting is not gonna work it falls in here so let's try adding Reload. Okay, so after a lot of trial and error, I found that I was asking the wrong question here. And uh, apparently the right question is if the y-axis is smaller or equal to minus 90 or is bigger or equals to 90. Then, if x is bigger than 0, I'm going to subtract using an absolute value. And if not, I'm just going to subtract using whatever value I got there in a nudge amount. Okay, and so this works. And if, if in case here, in the, if the y is not falling under this question, I, instead of subtracting, I'm going to add using an absolute value. So this was done with a lot of trial and error. And if I do, let me just uh, do this. So I don't have to see that. I'll reload it. Now if I go by 15 degrees here, and I press X. Now it spins around. And it keeps spinning. Okay, so we achieved that result. Now we want to spin on the other on the other direction. And then we want to do Y and Z. Also created three sliders here that uh, set X, Y and Z separately just to better understand how the transform getting transform set works. And sometimes you need to do stuff like this. You need to write a lot of code that is not even going to be used in the end. And even though I believe I'm going to end up using some of these sliders, but this is what I've done with these sliders so that you can better understand what's going on. Uh, never mind these variables, this is some other code that I was writing, but all I'm doing is I'm getting the transform, I'm setting the X on, one of, on this slider as it goes from minus 180 to 180. I'm doing the same for Y. Then I'm transform setting after I set that variable. And in the note bar, I'm getting the values of X, Y, and Z. I'm doing the same for the, all the three. And, and this allowed me to better understand how X, Y, and Z works. So the X, it's all nice and jolly until you get to uh, is it yeah until you get to 90 degrees so until I get to 89 degrees everything is fine you can see here the X the Y and the Z once I get to 90 what happens is well, let's go to 91 Y becomes 180 this Y becomes 180 and it goes back right so what actually happens is once Y becomes 180, let's make this Y 180, please. Going forward, going, make it 180, please. 179, 180. To keep going in that direction, I would have to decrease instead of increasing okay so what I done to make this slider work is the following inside the slider I've set the variable and then I ask if what I get from this slider right I get zero is bigger or equal to 90 well I know that Y needs to be 180 
So I created a variable here. It's just a crazy name that I give it here for now. And actually, I didn't need that variable right there. And I'm going to add 180 to Y. And then I'm going to create, I'm going to do this. I'm going to subtract 90 from X. And that's what's going to be left. And then I'm going to grab X. And I'm going to say X is equal to 90 minus whatever it's left. And this is going to invert the number. So if I go 91, this will turn into 89 and it keeps going down, right? If this only happens if what I get there is bigger or equal to 90. So it, I can I can start reverting it back. A bit complex, but you might get the picture, right? If this doesn't happen, then I'm going to ask if it's bigger or equal to zero. So in here, I fall into the category where it's from 0 to 90. And I have a variable here that I set and it sets 0. So if it's 1 and it, get, it turns to 1 here, because the first time it falls over 90, it turns that variable into 1 and it adds 180 to, to y. And then when I get back to 90, or right here, when I get back between 0 and minus 90, I reset that variable to 0. And I here I subtract and here I add. So anyway, I'm going to share this code and you can have a look at it and then analyze it and do whatever you want with it. Which, well, so this makes it so. I save this and I open up ZBrush again makes it so that when I'm in an X view, I can go up and it keeps going that way. And if I go back, it goes that way. So I have a slider that does that. And that's the X. Now I still have to solve the Y and I have to solve the Z and I have to solve the X negative and then Y, Z as well using this nudge amount slider. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to be back when the code is done and I'll talk a little bit about what happened there. Okay, so I've done the negative for the X and it's very similar to the positive. The only difference is that we use a, an addition here with an absolute value and and I believe that's it. Yeah, that was it. That was the only difference. So, and yeah, of course, there's a subtraction down here instead of an addition like we have there. And that worked for the negative. The Z axis was easier. Um, I noticed that the Z, if we have a Z for 0 to 180 and we keep going like that, that works. So all I did here in the code was add and subtract. And I made sure I had an absolute value for the nudge amount on the subtraction. Otherwise, it would be subtracting a negative number from each other and it wouldn't work. And then I just added a little bit of code down here to make sure Z wouldn't go over minus 360 or under uh, 360. Otherwise, it wouldn't really work properly. Now, the Y, I'm just using addition and subtraction. And um, I just make sure this is an absolute number. And going back here, reloading. So now I can show you that the Z is working. Let's do a 45 degree positive. And it goes like that. And as you can see up here in the Z, it's not going over 360, so it, does, so it doesn't give me any weird results. And on the negative, there we go. Same thing for the X on the negative. And the X for the positive. All working really nice. Now the Y, 
as this problem here okay and this problem I, I noticed that it can be fixed this has to do with Z it goes upside down because I'm not changing Z so here right when it's upside down if I wait Z 180 it goes back down again and I can keep going around so when it's upside down if I go back to zero okay so now I'm gonna code that so that I when I'm using Y I'll change Z to 180 so it doesn't flip using these values okay so the f solution for that was pretty obvious I noticed that it go all goes well until I get to 90 so when I go over 90 it flips or when I go under 90 it flips so when it flips I need to have my Z at 180 to flip it back to the to flip it back so I went to the into the code I left the code as it was and after that code I just ask if y is under or equal to minus 90 or if y is bigger than or equal to 90 I'm gonna set z which is this number 8 to 180 otherwise I'm gonna set z to 0 and that solved the problem so now if I go back to this script and I make this 0 minus 45 is z actually one y so i get that result minus 45 in the other direction sorted okay so the final result so far uh, i also changed here the y remember when we go over 90 or under 90 it would flip and so i just added that same code here after i calculate it after i set the y I check if the Y is bigger or smaller than minus 90 or bigger than equal than to 90 and I turn Z into 180 to flip it and now if we move the X that happens the Y okay and the Z which will go around that so it's not perfect because as you can see if my Z is like this and I start rotating it goes back to that not perfect in that sense and the same goes for X Y and Z if I say a 45 m out and I start doing the X notice that there's a small rotation there to the negative that can be fixed with a bit of more calculations but I'm gonna leave that to you guys if you wanna fiddle around I'm gonna give you the code and you can keep improving this plugin for your use and let's look at minus as well the other direction okay so now that we know that this is working more or less like you wanted it in the first place we're going to try and improve this code and turn this into a plugin okay so the first thing I, I notice is that I'm using this transform git and transform set a bunch of times here so I could do a routine for that and I could have a transform git and a routine and a transform set routine. What I can do is do a routine def transform, for example, and then I can pass in a variable called type. <coughs> And type is going to be, I can make a comment here, zero, 
is going to be git and one is going to be set and then I can say if type and this means that type is one I'm setting well actually let's let's turn this around let's make one git and zero set so this would be git and this would be set so all I need to do is grab this guy let's get and then grab this guy copy and that's set and now to call that routine all I would need to do is say routine call transform and then if I'm doing a git it's one so I'll just copy this and I'll grab this git one and I'll grab all of them no not that one okay and I'll paste that code there that's a git now for set that will be zero so if I copy that and I look for my set ones and paste that there okay so now one thing that I've done here as from the beginning is a, a variable a list variable with nine positions in it to grab all nine positions this would be handy if I wanted to change the position and the scale I don't really want to do that so I'm gonna make these three positions and make these guys <clears throat> zero one and two or I could actually use an XYZ variable instead of using a list variable but I'm going with that so because we don't need these guys because we don't need these guys we can delete them here and just leave empty values we don't want to get those values so we'll just leave them empty and just worry about the last three so now I have to replace this would be the 789 so everywhere I have 7 it will become 0 8 it will become 1 and 9 why do I have a 9 here will become 2 oh, actually uh, yeah I forgot the 6 the 6 is the 0 so let's do that that's a 0 the 7 is the 1 And the eight is the two. There we go. Now, like I said, you don't need to use a list variable. You could use just an X, Y, and a Z variable. Now I'm just going to get rid of these comments. I don't need that. Okay. I'll leave that as is. I'll leave a note bar for some feedback and uh, that's okay that's okay get rid of that comment size this code right here right let's look at this code here and see how we can if we can improve this 
I don't think I used these variables, so I'm gonna get rid of it. I did use this one. Yep. Boolean. I could use a routine because this code and this code is exactly the same. I could use a routine to do this, but there's no point really. It's just a little bit of code. And remember, this is actually a global variable because it was set inside the slider. So I can do GL left. Or better yet, I could make all of this one routine. And I believe that's what I'm going to do right now. Xbool is there. Da -da 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 -da. So Xbool is actually. Yeah, I believe Xbool actually needs to be a global variable, so I'm gonna leave it out there. And I'm gonna create a, a routine. Set sliders. Let's set the sliders. Let's make it that. So we have three different sliders. So let's make it, let's use a type here. And there's gonna be three different types. So type one will be X, two Y, and three Z. Now to start with, all I'm gonna do is just grab this, all of this, and place that inside the type X. And I'll move this forward a little bit. Grab this, place that inside of type Y, move that forward and close that, and place that in type Z. Move that forward, okay. Now all I have to do is call that routine, so I'm just going to grab this, because I'm lazy, and I'm going to do that, grab that name. Set sliders, move that forward, this would be type 1, and then I'm just gonna place that inside the other ones, type 2 and type 3. <clears throat> okay, so that now that we have this inside the routine, let's see what's repeated here. And the first thing we can check is the note bar. So the note bar is repeated in all of them, so I can just leave a note bar down there, remove that, remove that, okay. So we already saved some space in our code. What else is repeated? So, routine call transform one here, uh, inside the type one, let me just close this for now. Routine call transform zero, so they all start by setting uh, getting the transform and then setting the transform in the end which means I can bring the set transform down here and a get transform up here and then I can get rid of all the other ones okay so that's pretty simplified already what else can we do here? Okay, so we have transform, I get zero, transform one, I get zero, transform two, I get zero. Okay, so that, that's another improvement we can make. We know that type is one, two, three. Let me just do that. And they all start by setting a variable. This one is zero, this is, this is one, and this is two. So what I can do, is bring this up here and I know that type this is zero based and type is not so I can say I can grab this type here place it in there and say type minus one so if it's one and it's X it becomes zero if it's two and it's Y it becomes one and if it's three and it's Z it becomes zero which means I don't need that there and I don't even need type 3. So I can remove type 3. 
Hopefully that will work and we'll test it right away before we get any further. Okay, so I add this error right away. Unspecified variable name in transform git. Probably because I didn't put anything there. I'm not really sure why I get the zero error, but I'm going to revert back to the system I had. If you guys know the answer, please let me know and let all other users know. But here I have got nothing and I'm going to revert back to what I had, which is pretty simple this time. Okay, so I reverted back to what I had, the full list variable right there. Uh, save that and let's check it out if we have the same error. Okay, let's make it 45 degree here. Okay, that works. Minus 45. That works. There's a flip there. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Maybe because it wasn't zeroed out. Yeah, it wasn't zeroed out. Z is working. Right, this is weird. Okay, so now I just want to check if this routine we are creating is giving me the right thing. And it's not because I reverted back. I reverted back to this. So these would be six and then seven and then eight, which would not work here. So for type one, we want six. So one plus five, actually one plus five. 2 plus 5, and that would be 6, that would be x. Number 2 would be 5, 6, 7. And number 3, which doesn't even exist, would be 8. And that would be sorted, hopefully. Okay, did I save that? <clears throat> I did. Reload. 45 then. Okay, now it works. And here. That works. Y. And Z. Okay. Lovely. Everything works. Let's see how... how can we improve this even further? Okay, so we can... Let's organize this a little bit better. Let's move this up here. I'll just cut that from there. And place it where the routines are. Okay. And I'll place all the variables up there. And all the routines up here. So we got the variables, we got the routines, and then we got the buttons and uh, and the sliders. Right. Okay. I believe we're ready to make this a plugin. Okay. So we're gonna need to start by creating a sub palette in the plugin in the plugin sub palette. So I say sub I sub palette inside of Z plugin sub palette. I'm going to create a plugin called Mad Pony Nudge Axis. So now every button and slider will need a reference to this. So if I copy this and I come here to all of these guys, I'll paste this, do that. And now these will become, will show up as a plugin. Now I'm also gonna come down here and create a button called close before we finish up our plugin so that at, I'm gonna check my plugin and see how it works. And if I'm not happy, I'll have a close button. When I use the command, I close to close that plugin. Okay. 
so let's see how it works now. So you go back to ZBrush. And now when we, let me just open my plugins here. Okay, so it should show up down there. When I reload, that goes away and now I have a plugin. Okay, so we have nudge him out, the X and Y and Z like we had. And we have that set X, set Y and set Z. So now we have, we have our little plugin all ready and set to go. Now I'm happy with that. I'll just close that and get back to my code. I now can remove that button. I won't need it. Now I save this and if I go to my folder where this now every time I open that file this Z ZSC file is created. So I want to delete that because that's the file that we need to put in our in our Z script Z startup Z plugins 64 folder. So if I now go into ZBrush and I run the script again. Let's go to load, run that script, open, and he's there. Exactly how I want it. Now if I go back here, well, it didn't create it that because I opened it quite a few times. So I'm gonna restart ZBrush and do this again. Okay, so I restarted ZBrush. I'm gonna load my script again. And this time, there the guy is. This time I have a ZSC file and I'm absolutely sure that it's doing that. So now I can grab this file. I don't need this folder. I usually use a folder to put some data in, but in this plugin we don't we didn't really use it. So I'll grab this file. Let's copy, go into my Z script uh, into my Z start. So Program Files Pixel Logic 2009 Z Startup, go into Z Plugin 64 and paste that guy right there. So next time I open up ZBrush, this will be placed in alphabetic order. So it's going to be around here with my Mad Pony plugins and it will be part of ZBrush plugin sub palette. And there it is. After I restarted ZBrush, we have it there in alphabetic order our new plugin. I hope you enjoyed this video and I see you on the next video.